Hey guys, Vlad here with David T. Astro. Um, if you're not familiar, I run a little Astro blog uh, where I review all kinds of fun astronomy gear. Um, so when you get a chance, check it out. Uh, just a little bit about me. I've been into astronomy for like the last 20, 25 years, pretty much since I was a little kid. Um, I've had the privilege of owning over a hundred scopes, just all kinds of fun astro gear. Um, so that's, that's kind of what inspired my little blog is that, you know, I figure since I get a chance to try out all this gear, I might as well, you know, write it up, you know, especially stuff that I find really interesting. Anyway, so the topic of this video. I, uh, I volunteer a lot at my astronomy club where basically, um, I volunteer at the telescope workshop where we work on telescopes, uh, fix telescopes, do all kinds of fun stuff with them, where like even build telescopes. Um, and just by, from meeting people at star parties uh, that are kind of newer to the hobby, uh, one of the most common questions that I get is, well, hey, I just bought my first telescope, um, or even for, for somebody that's been in the hobby for a while, but maybe they haven't looked into eyepieces, what eyepiece should I buy? Well, uh, that's kind of what I, I actually have a review or write up about this on my blog already, but I figured I'd make a YouTube video just to kind of get a little bit more in depth into my thoughts on the subject. Um, and I'm actually going to be uh, doing a, you know, a few more of these videos probably just on questions that I get really commonly so that way I could just direct people to them to to my videos basically and you know not spend like an hour with each person kind of explaining this stuff uh, so anyway let's get into it so which eyepiece should you buy if you just got your first scope or whatever scope you know like you're thinking about buying like a good quality eyepiece upgrading from the eyepiece that came with your scope you know what should you go with okay well let's get into it so chances are, if you bought, you know, any type of a decent scope, you know, we're talking about the, uh, like Celestron's uh, Nexstar series, like their 6SC, SEC scopes, which are very popular. Um, and you have the decent Mead scopes, uh, Explore Scientific scopes, pretty much you name it, most of the scopes that are imported from China. Chances are what you got with your scope is at least one, maybe several, uh, what are called colossal eyepieces. This is, you know, this is a design that's been out there for, you know, for quite some time. You know, it's it's a proven design, and um, in general, you know, they're not bad eyepieces. Um, so basically, like these will tend to have about uh, five elements in there. When I say elements, I mean you know like five actual lenses in there that are stacked to to produce the image that uh, your telescope uh, supplies to them. Um, they typically will have about a fifty degree field of view, and what you know what I mean by field of view is um, that's just the amount of sky that they will show you essentially. So, um, having said that, um, why or what uh, should you upgrade to from the supplied eyepiece that, eyepieces that you got with your scope? Whether it be one, in a lot of cases they'll come with one eyepiece, two or three, you know, somewhere around there. Um, well, it kind of depends. There's two main reasons really to upgrade from the supplied eyepiece that you got. Um, the first reason is, is that if you, if you want, uh, if you're into like looking at um, nebulas, galaxies, star clusters, these plossal eyepieces, while they're, they're optically pretty good, they do give you a pretty narrow field of view. So basically you're, you're looking at a pretty, you know, pretty narrow uh, swatch of the sky, of the night sky at the, you know, at the same time. So the primary advantage that you'll get by getting those, you know, hundred dollar, several hundred dollar or even thousand dollar eyepieces is that you're actually just going to get a wide, wider field of view essentially. So you're not per se getting a better performing eyepiece. It's not necessarily sharper. It's not necessarily going to have better contrast, um, but it is going to be wider. 
So basically, as an example, this is one of my primary eyepieces. And these eyepieces that I've got up here, these are these are all my eyepieces that I use. Um, it's actually not my entire collection, but you know, especially these Explore Scientific, those are my primary eyepieces. Uh, so using this 25 millimeter Explore Scientific 100 degree field of view eyepiece, uh, compared to the 26 millimeter Mead Plus or Super Plus, so these are like about the most common eyepiece that Mead has supplied with their scopes for years and years um, in the past. Now I think they have newer designs, but you know they're basically the same thing. So anyway, so what do you go? What do you get from going from this guy that's supplied with your scope? And you know these run brand new for like roughly around fifty bucks or so. To going to something like the Explore Scientific uh, 25 millimeter 100 degree field of view eyepiece, these brand new. Um, I forget honestly. I should have looked it up, but these are I don't know like 800 bucks brand new or something like that. So what's the main advantage here? Is it might is it that much like it will it show you more colors in nebulas? Is it just sharp or clear? Or like what's the difference? Um, well. You'll be surprised to hear that, honestly, there's optically not that much of a difference between these. They'll show you about the same thing, except um, this will literally show you about twice the field of view of this eyepiece. Even though the magnification is really similar uh, between these, so this is a 26 millimeter eyepiece, and the way that you figure out the magnification um, of your telescope is you take the focal length of your telescope, you divide it by the focal length of the eyepiece. So let's say if you have the next star 6 LC telescope, those have a um, focal length of 1600 so millimeters, so you take 1600 millimeters, you divide it by 26 millimeters, and you'd get the magnification. Um, similarly with this, it, it, it'd be the same magnification, um, or a similar magnification, I mean. Now, again, you're literally going to get twice the field, the field of view with this eyepiece. So what's the advantage to that, you might ask? I mean, like, why would I care about that? Well, it's just this, you know, it's just a much, much more immersive view that you get. So basically with this side piece, you know, when I look through it, it looks like I'm kind of looking through, you know, a lot of people use the example of a straw. Um, you know, it's probably not as narrow as a straw, but, you know, it's definitely pretty, it's pretty confining. Like, you know, it, it doesn't look like, you know, like I'm looking out the, you know, the window of a spaceship. It just looks like, you know, if you remember biology class from high school, like if you look through a microscope, usually this is about the same field of view of like a microscope eyepiece. So it's, you know, it's pretty, pretty narrow. Now, when you, when you step up to something with a wider field of view, um, you're essentially not per se bound by like any boundary to the field of view almost like Unless you're, unless my eye is just really, really tight up against the eyepiece, I can't even see the, the actual boundary of the eyepiece. So you like, you know, you almost kind of like have to move your head to see different parts of the field of view. And essentially what that gives you is just a much, much more immersive experience. Um, so a lot of people will compare it to like looking out the, you know, the window of a, of a spaceship when you're, you know, when you're looking through one of these guys. Um, and I would tend to agree with them and think the Enterprise, um, you know, you're sitting there in your little comfy captain's chair and you got that big old screen, you know, to where you could see like everything out of it. So that's, you know, it's kind of what this gives you. Instead of kind of looking through, you know, just kind of like a really narrow uh, field of view, I guess like this. So again, that's the primary difference. Um, typically, will this have a little bit better coatings on the glass? Maybe, um, they, like for instance, this is just kind of specific to the side piece, but this one is waterproof. So, um, I mean, that doesn't mean you're going to go throw this thing in the water, but like if some dew forms on it, if you happen to get like a little bit of a mist going just because you went inside and it rained a little bit on this thing, it'll be fine. 
Uh, the primary advantage with the Explore Scientific waterproof ones is that, like, if you're cleaning it, you don't have a you know that much of a risk of water actually getting in between the elements of this. That's pretty sweet. Um, so that's kind of an advantage. Um, having said that, though, these eyepieces actually do have a disadvantage too. They're you know obviously it's bigger, right? And they're it's a lot heavier. I mean, this thing basically doesn't weigh anything. This thing, you know, I, I'm I'm not sure what these weigh, but like a couple of pounds or so. I mean, pretty heavy. Um, the other difference that there can be between eyepieces that are especially in the shorter focal length is the eye relief. So if you're an eyeglass wearer. Um, and you need, you know, because eyeglasses, you know, they'll, they'll stick out a little bit from your face. Um, so if the eye relief on the eyepiece is really tight, you just really can't even get, you know, close enough to really see the field of view. Um, if you're, especially if you're an eyeglass wearer. If you're not an eyeglass wearer, you can get really close to it, you know. Um, so that's the other difference that can constitute why you'd want to go from something like this to a more expensive eyepiece is because you really need the extra eye relief. Um, I don't wear eyeglasses, so I don't focus too much on that. If you do wear eyeglasses, uh, all you really want to look up is what the eye relief is. So if you, you know, if, if you're using the the eyepiece that came with your scope and you're just really kind of you know struggling to get it you know close enough to it with your eyeglasses, um, look up the eye relief of the eyepiece that you already have. And just kind of guesstimate how much more space you'd need um, to, you know, to kind of get close enough and look at, at you know, eyepieces that are specifically designed for a longer eye relief. And there's plenty, plenty of them on the market. Um, so, yeah. That. Anyway, I've kind of rambled enough about this. So, again, to kind of summarize... You're not getting like a more colorful, like way better image with this. It's just wider. That's the primary difference. Or, you know, if, if you went from this to an eyepiece that had a longer eye relief, which I unfortunately I don't have any of those eyepieces, but if you did go to that, you're probably going to get a little bit wider field of view, but primarily you're going to get, get the, eye, the the longer eye relief. Um, so that's kind of the difference. So having said all that, if you just buy your first scope or you're you know you've had a scope for a while you've got you know one several of these um what eyepiece would i recommend to the newer person or to the person that's looking to you know get their first serious eyepiece even if you've been in the hobby for a while well basically um yeah it's the 30 millimeter three inch explore scientific 100 degree field of view eyepiece. No, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I mean, this thing, yeah, it's it's a cool piece of glass, you know, but I mean, this, you know, it's it's kind of like the outlier out there. Um, actually, you know, even though I've got, you know, pretty decent high end eyepieces, um, I really don't use these Explore Scientific 100 degrees all that often, you know, you, you might be surprised, but I actually do not use these like all that often. The time that I use these is when I go to a star party, that's like a multi, you know, night star party. You know, I've got the time to set everything up. I've got my nice scopes out there. Yeah, I'll bring these along and I'll use these quite a bit. They're, you know, they are excellent eyepieces. They do give you that immersive, you know, field of view to where like it feels like you're just floating out there in space looking around. Yeah, cool. Um, the eyepiece that I actually use the most is, where is she? Uh, the Batter 8 to 24 millimeter zoom. Um, so why is that, you would ask? Um, well, a couple of different reasons. So physically, it's not... You know, it's obviously larger than your typical, like, entry-level type of eyepiece, than the Plasso eyepiece. Um, it's a little bit heavier, for sure. Um, but the advantage that you get with this eyepiece is that you've got an eyepiece that covers everything from 8 millimeters to 24 millimeters. Um, it gives you a huge range of magnifications that'll cover. 
Um, a lot of times, you know, if I'm observing in my backyard, I've only got like 30 minutes to observe. You know, I'm not going to bring all this stuff out with me. It's just, it's just too much hassle. It's just too much weight. This eyepiece, um, at its 24 millimeter setting, so that's the lowest magnification setting, it'll give you about the same field of view around 50 degrees as the supplied eyepieces. So you're really, so if you have, let's say, your scope came with this 26 millimeter plossel, you're really not getting too much more at the 24 millimeter setting as far as, you know, like the width of the field of view. It's basically the same thing. The closer that you get to that eight mag, the eight millimeter setting, the wider the field of view actually gets to where it actually gets to 68 degrees of field of view versus again, about the 50 of, of your standard eyepieces, the plus one. So you get a much wider field of view. Now, is it as wide as, you know, these guys, the hundred degrees? Uh, no, it's not, it's not quite as wide, but realistically, even though I do have the 100 degree field of view eyepieces, in a way, I almost prefer the few, the um, the experience of using a 68 degree field of view eyepiece. Um, I've actually got, so this is my trusty 40 millimeter. This is a 68 degree field of view eyepiece. This is like the lowest power eyepiece that I have. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, the reason that I, in a lot of cases, I actually prefer the 68 degree field of view eyepiece is that the eye relief is going to be longer to see uh, to where you could see the entire field of view of the side pieces compared to the hundreds. The hundreds, you're really in the glass to see the entire field of view. To where's this, you know, I mean, it's uh, like if you had eyeglasses, I really doubt that you'd be able to see the entire field of view of this all at once. If you know, if you don't wear eyeglasses, though, that it's pretty easy, very comfortable to use. Um, so yeah, so you get a pretty wide experience um, at the higher magnification settings at this. You know, the closer you get to the eight millimeter, the bigger the field of view. So fairly wide, especially let's say in the 12 to eight millimeter range, you're getting a fairly wide um, basically experience. So that's why, um, you know, and I'd go and read the little write-up that I have on my blog about the side piece. Um, that's why I recommend it though, is because you're getting a really good eyepiece that'll essentially give you the same four eyepieces as if you bought these. Let's say the Explorer Scientific, and you know, I'm not, I'm not promoting Explorer Scientific or anything, I really don't care what you buy. But basically, if you buy any of the quality, you know, eyepieces in the 68 degree field of view, of let's say like a Teleview, Explorer Scientific, the Meads, um, I mean, there's like, there's like a gazillion different brands, they're all pretty good these days, in the Explorer Scientific, or in the 68 degree field of view. So if you bought them in the 12, 10, 8 millimeter, like in that, in that type of range, you're, you're essentially getting several eyepieces. You're covering the entire range. There, it's gonna be about as wide as these in one eyepiece. Um, the other thing that I like about it is um, a lot of times I'll just grab this as my only eyepiece. Like again, if I don't have a lot of time to observe, I'll just grab this eyepiece, whether I'm doing planetary observing, whether I'm doing uh, deep sky type of stuff. I mean, this will cover me for most of the things that I need. Um, now, kind of uh, covering uh, as far as, you know, is it as sharp as the other eyepieces out there? I have observed extensively, this is my most used eyepiece, I've observed extensively with this thing. I've compared it to ortho, I don't even have my orthos out here, but those are, they're kind of like a simpler um, eyepiece design, and typically they are sharper. They like they let through more light. Um, I've compared it extensively to those. I have yet to see um, any difference in performance of this thing to my best sharpest eyepieces. If anything, this thing, um, I mean, you know, at worst, I think it's ninety-five percent. Uh, as good as you know the best eyepieces out there. I mean maybe 90, I don't know, but you know I don't have like those ultra premium planetary eyepieces. Um, but anyway, it's, it's very good as, as far as sharpness, as far as contrast, very very good eyepiece. I mean you, 
you will not be losing out as far as the optical performance. I mean, are there wider field of view eyepieces? Yes, there are wider field of view eyepieces. Um, are there eyepieces that have a longer eye relief than this? Yes, there are. So again, if you're concerned about eye relief, if you're an eyeglass wearer, or you just you know you're just having a tough time with the eye relief of you know your standard eyepieces, look into that by the longer eye relief eyepieces. Uh, if you're not, uh, yeah, this is this is an awesome, awesome place to start because you already have an eyepiece that's as good as anything out there, really. You know, as far as sharpness, contrast, it's it's a great eyepiece. Um, so you're essentially getting one eyepiece that covers the range of several. Now, let's say you you know you've you've got a few of these. You graduate to buying one of these. So for your lower power view eyepiece, you could still use this, especially if you have something like a 32 millimeter or a 40 millimeter. Like if you have the 26 millimeter like this, and you know you're you already have 20 here, you're probably not even going to use this. So if you like sell this or give it to somebody or whatever you want to do with them. Um, the, the next eyepiece that I would add is something like, you know, like a 40, like 40 millimeter, you know, 68 degree field of view or so. These two eyepieces right here, actually, um, I can come, I like, I don't care if I'd be going for a week long, you know, start party. I could take these two eyepieces and I'd be pretty damn happy with them. I mean, like, would I be happier if I had all my other eyepieces with me? Yeah, you know, like, you know, I would enjoy that a little bit more. But I wouldn't feel like I'm missing out on too much, you know, just in general of like, you know, like whether it be deep sky observing, um, observing the planets, double star observing, whatever your thing is, this combo right here will cover you for pretty much like 90% of observing. That's why I recommend this eyepiece because this is an eyepiece that, you know, while you're newer, this gives you a great piece of glass to, um, you know, to basically observe pretty much anything you know especially again in that lower um, uh, millimeter range or at the higher magnification range the, whatever way you want to look at them because you're getting that wider field of view it's it's about as sharp as anything out there contrast is great on great eyepiece um, so in the future you know if you do get into the hobby really deep like me um, and you do pick up those glass you know those big black glass eye pieces you're still going to use this that's again that's why i recommend this this one as one of your first eye pieces one of your first serious eye pieces is it cheap no i mean they're you know they're kind of pricey um but again it's worth it though because it gives you several eyepieces and this is an eyepiece you're going to keep on using. I could, I could guarantee you that. This is an eyepiece you're going to keep on using. Um, depending on what scope you have, you may want to pick this up because this thing is available as a bundle with a Bartle lens. So you may want to pick that up with the Bartle lens combo. So um, if you have one of the SCTs, like let's say the Celestron um, next are six se or the eight se or you know whatever like uh sniff cats you got you probably don't need the barrel this will give you plenty of magnification um if you do not if you've got one of the shorter focal length refractors like an apo or something or an acro you would probably want to pick this up with the barlow and let's see so i've got the barlow here and essentially a barlow it's a pretty cool device um Batters Barlow's, uh, typically Barlow's, they're a 2x, so they, whatever the magnification this thing gives you, it'll double it. Uh, batters are a 2.25x, so you just, you know, you calculate whatever magnification you're getting with this thing, you times it by 2.25x, and, you know, that's the magnification that you get. So that's really cool. So with a lot of short focal length refractors, you will have to use the Barlow to get a decent magnification. Um... Now that kind of brings me to another question, like, you know, whether you're getting this side piece or whatever right piece you end up getting, um, you know, what, like what magnifications are useful for you if you're just kind of starting out and you, you just kind of don't know. I mean, it seems like, you know, like you'd want to go as high as you can, right? Well, you know, the issue with that is if you live in most parts of the world, which you do, <laughs> Um, you can't use more than, let's say, about 150x on the average night. You just, you know, the scene, the, the, the steadiness of the air will just not allow you to get there. It's just, you know, it's just how it is, unfortunately. 
Um, so basically, just do some math. Again, you know, the, the for, for figuring out your magnification is pretty simple. You take the focal length of your telescope, you divide it by the focal length of the eyepiece, and you get the magnification. So I, you know, for deep sky type of stuff, one of my very favorite magnifications is 120 to about 130x. Um, that's about kind of the sweet spot with a lot of scopes um, of showing you a relatively, you know, large size image of the object, but something that's also, um, but something that's, you know, you still have a wide enough field of view to kind of get the context of the stars around that type of deal. Uh, for planetary, it actually, it's not a bad magnific magnification either. Um, it's, you know, the planets, they're still going to look pretty small at 120x, but it's large enough to where you can, you know, you can see a decent amount of detail. And again, most nights will support that magnification. If you're more into planetary observing, if you live pretty much in the southern parts of the United States, or, you know, if you're in the other parts of the world, like, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know how, how good your scene is. Uh, but typically, the lower you are in the United States, the better your scene is going to be, typically, just generally speaking. Um, also, the planets are going to be higher in, in your sky, just because they're, you know, they're typically further south. But anyhow, um, if, you know, if you know that your scene is good, if you've talked to other people, like 200x would be a, a better power for planetary observing. That's where the disk of, you know, like let's say Jupiter or Saturn or Mars when it's, you know, close to the Earth will be, you know, sufficiently large to where you could see a good amount of detail on the disk of the planet. Um, but again, that's assuming that the scene on that particular night is good enough to support 200x. And on a lot of nights, it's not. Like I live here in the Northwest and our scene is just not that great. I mean, on most nights, you know, I'll have my, you know, like whether I have like this need, you know, 17080D, it's a seven inch APO, or like my Tech 140, which is, you know, it's one, about one of the best APOs that you could buy in that, you know, the size range. And I'm still limited to, you know, probably like about around 180 x if I'm lucky. You know, sometimes it's even worse than that. So just because you've got like an awesome, amazing telescope, you've got some of the best eyepieces in the world, doesn't mean that you're going to be able to do like 600 times magnification on Jupiter. It's just, you know, it's just not going to happen. That's just because of the atmosphere. That's why they have this Hubble Space Telescope up there. Uh, in space is because, you know, that's the whole point of putting a telescope in space is that you're up above uh, the atmosphere. So anyhow, um, yeah, if you got any questions, comments, um, please let me know in the comments. Uh, but yeah, I feel very confident after trying, I mean, like literally hundreds and hundreds of eyepieces that this is a very good first choice for, you know, your first serious eyepiece. Um, yeah, let me know if you got any questions, comments, check out my website, abtastro.com, that's abt-astro.com, and I'll have it in, in, in the end anyway. Um, but yeah, very, very awesome eyepiece to go with. Later.